Mary Lou, I'm going to use the privilege of my poor Greek uh, to speak in English and uh, to also help a few of our friends that are in our audience today who uh, should not be exposed to my poor Greek, uh, but better be exposed to my better English. So I'll talk about the Cubatans um, and I'll, I'll try and draw some parallels uh, on one specific theory that has marked my life. Uh, actually, not marked all of my life, but you know, up until about five or six years ago when I went through a I went through a very brief course. I was introduced to uh, a theory by a guy called Maslow. So I'm going to try and draw a parallel between Maslow and co-working. And if any of you in the space want to build a co-working space, is there anybody that wants to build a co-working space? Okay, let's try another question. Anybody in the room that hasn't already got a startup that wants to build a startup? Only one, two. Why is everybody else here? <laughs> so, I guess everybody else wants to come and visit the co-working space because they're all excellent, they're all amazing. So, Marilu mentioned one thing. This is the key message in the startup industry. You need to grab the whole world in your attempt. Go big or go home. And that's, I guess, the, the evolution of my involvement in CoLab was to do something significantly larger that could do more, have more impact. So, I'm riding this wave right now, and it's kind of scary. I'm at the bottom, and it's not yet peaking, but uh, it will, I guess, at some point. And that's the blank slide. That's a blank slide, because I wanted to talk about not so much a cube, but I wanted to talk about a pyramid. And I'm sorry for that, that slide is quite busy, but I'm going to very briefly talk about the basics. And what Maslow said was, I mean, there's five basic needs that a human desires or, you know, to survive. Uh, those being some basic things, some safety, uh, love and belonging, esteem and self-actualization. I'm going to draw those, I'm going to put items into those parts of the pyramid. And he said essentially that you can't, you, you can't evolve onto the next step until you actually have the base of the pyramid. I'm not talking about a cube here, I'm talking about a pyramid, right? So, the basics, and if you're going to build a co-working space, and I think all of the spaces that have been represented today and some of the others that aren't represented, unfortunately, cover most of these basics, right? Things like Wi-Fi, very, very strong internet connection, because you've got a lot of people that are drawing down a lot of internet all the time, non-stop, okay? Chairs, office equipment, desks, etc. all these cool things that you need to sit and work on. And, you know, it solves one basic need, does co-working. It's, it's, it's you know, I need, a, I need a more professional office. I'm tired of working at home. I don't like working in coffee shops. Um, the library's cool, but it's too quiet. So I need to work somewhere else. Five minutes, right. Safety, trust between the members. Trust, very important. I mentioned that at Open Coffee a couple of weeks ago. If you don't have trust between the members and if there's a problem there, the curators of the space need to jump in and sort that problem out, okay? Advice from mentors. And in fact, what happens is, a lot of the mentors in the space, act, a lot of the co-workers in the space actually act as mentors to each other. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful environment. A relaxed atmosphere and financial safety. It needs to be both financially accessible and geographically accessible. Financial safety doesn't exist when you've started a startup. You're not working for a corporate anymore that if you fail, you go to your boss, you say, I failed, your salary is still going to get paid at the end of the month. No. Co-working and, well, not so much co-working, but uh, startups, not like that. Love and belonging. You need to feel the love in the space, you need to be loved, you need to belong. So co-working spaces need to have a basic set of events which inspire that community. Collective projects, um, Thomas may spoke about that. Social bounds, that's very important, I mean what's allowed and what's not allowed, right? Um, you know, you're, not allowed to, you're not allowed to shout very loudly in a co-working space, you're allowed to make as much noise as you are, as you need to, to do, do your work but not, not enough space, not enough noise as to disturb your co-workers. So there's some social rules. Esteem. Everybody understands the word esteem, I think, right? We need to feel that we've been valued, that our contribution is valued. So an active role in the community. And then self-actualization at the end, which is the pinnacle of the whole thing, and we've actually arrived, is basically what it is. So let me just go to the next, next slide. And I'm going to try and map this down to startups. And this is very rough, very, very rough. And I'm, you know, a little bit of an expert, but I'm no, no expert, right? So, if we look at, again, the pyramid and the things that we need to build onto, we have a problem in the conditions of an for an opportunity, right? So, uh, the, the teams that come into the space need to actually 
go through these steps. Identify the problem, identify the opportunity. We need to build a team that has ability to execute that idea. We need to have trust between them. The product and the most, the minimum viable product, not the most valuable player, which was sitting yesterday. Hard work, non-stop hard work. Someone mentioned the Olympics earlier on. Harder, faster, cheaper. Right? Well, cheaper is not part of it. At least not the Athens Olympics. Um, but you need to work very, very hard. And you're in, in, an, in an environment where everybody's working hard. And when you're working amongst champions, you end up becoming a champion. If you play football against a, a stronger team, you will eventually, well, you'll get beaten up a lot. I played rugby at school. I got beaten up a lot. But I, got a bit, I became a better player. Ended up captaining my team. Then really got beaten up. Um, so you'll need to think big. That big wave, you need to ride that big wave. Think scale, think of the world. You need to attack the world. Funding. So that comes up next, and that comes when you manage to convince some of the VCs that might exist in some of the spaces, or might visit some of the spaces, or visit within our community. So when you can prove that you have the ability to execute on that idea, that funding will come. Too many people say, oh, I'll do it when I find the funds. Not going to happen. You're not going to do it. You're not going to find the funds. Startup actualization. That's when your startup actually graduates and is no longer a startup, it's actually a business. I hate using that at the top where it says money generating machine, but that's exactly what you want to do. You want to build a money generating machine. My next slides, I have got to do with the cube. Very, very briefly, I've got one and a half minutes. So, we've got 20 private rooms, uh, over 40 open plan work tables, so we can seat a lot of people. Um, open plan team tables as well. We've got three training rooms for five, for 15 and 35 people. We've got three, I think it's five meeting rooms now. Uh, and a meetup meet space for up to 100 people. So those events are really, uh, really... And we have a cafe that's in planning. Our cafe will be high energy, green, almost vegan type food that will give you a lot of energy, a lot of protein at a hopefully low cost. Because people need to eat. So cube extras, lockers for the teams, telephony. Uh, so each team that needs a, a phone line will get one. Virtual land, so you have privacy between. These are the lessons we took from Colab, from Colab that people needed privacy in their, in their communications, right? Uh, virtual dress reception. Here's some pictures, very, very briefly, I'll go back one. Some pictures of the space. Oh, those are the kids. We teach them programming every second Saturday. You should, if you've got kids, you should bring them. It's a lot of fun. It's cool. It's a team. It's a project called Coda Dojo. Uh, that's a picture of the space. That's a picture of the front reception. That's one of our meeting rooms. That is outside our meeting room. Here's some of our family, some of the teams that are in the space, 30 seconds. Um, all amazing teams, and we've got two new teams as of yesterday. Where are the guys from Startup Weekend, the winners of Startup Weekend? One team there, where is the other team? They're not here. Okay, they should have been, but anyway. That's Moy Maps. Uh, no, that's UniNotes. That's UniNotes. You should talk to them, they've got a great idea. Right, Campus. Software Development C, Objective C. If you want a good foundation in software development, that's the, team, that's the, that's the course you want to join. Okay, we'll be announcing it soon. So, some of the events, and I think our lead sponsor in the space and our key education partner is AIT. And so, you know, I'd love to welcome you to the space. Come and talk to me after this, uh, after this talk and uh, I will give you all the information you need if you want to build a space or if you want to come work in a space. Thank you very much.